Hey everyone, this is Hedge, and today we're going to be going over how to build a Bajorn Cyber Viking. So, really quick, here are the materials you're going to need. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi 2W. And you'll need these with the headers, and I'll post a link on where to get them. They're kind of hard to find. I found them on uh, Pie Shop US. And then you're going to need a WaveShare 2.13 inch uh, e paper display. I'm using the version 4, um, and that's the one I'd recommend. And then you'll need an 8GB SD card, and then a uh, case is optional. What I really like about this build is that it uh, it shares most of the, well, all the components with a, uh, a Ponagachi. And uh, it differs because this is more of a, um, like a local network pen testing device. It's going to scan the network, uh, do vulnerability assessment, uh, and conduct system attacks such as like FTP, SSH attacks, um, try to exfiltrate data. Um, it's a pretty powerful device. Um, it's an alpha though, so don't expect it to work uh, flawlessly just yet. It's, um, it's still being worked on. So before we jump right in, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. Whether you're a hobbyist or a pro, PCBWay has you covered with PCB prototyping, assembly, and manufacturing services such as 3D printing and CNC, or even injection molding. I recently put in an order, actually, for a, a couple PCBs, and they'll be part of some projects later on this channel, so can't wait to share them with you guys. Anyways, huge shout out to PCBWay. Thanks again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, your browser and then we're going to go to the github for the journal. Uh, the link will be in the description. And so you'll want to go down to the installation and configuration section and read these prerequisites. So we're going to install Raspberry Pi OS, the bookworm version, and then we'll have to do some OS customizations using the Raspberry Pi imager. But we'll walk through this now. Um, so go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi imager and choose a device and it'll be the Raspberry Pi 2W. And the link for this will be in the description below. The OS will be Raspberry Pi 32-bit um, bookworm version. You'll have to go to the other section and then find Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. This is no desktop environment. And then the bookworm version. Choose storage, it'll be my 8 gigabyte SD card. And then we'll hit next. And then here you'll want to edit the settings. This is where we'll um, set the host name to Bajorn and the username as well. Um, I set password to Bajorn also. Um, and then uh, you'll have to set your uh, Wi-Fi network up. So this will be the SSID of your network. So just find out what that is and then the Wi-Fi password. And then head over to the services tab and we will enable SSH. And then uh, you'll hit yes and then this will wipe your SD card. And then just go ahead and start it. Okay, now that we're done flashing, you'll go ahead and uh, insert the SD card and then plug it into your computer or your power. Um, and then we'll need to SSH into I'll use Ternius. Uh, link will be in the description as well for the software. I already have a, um, a saved connection, but let's go ahead and start from scratch to join that level and then hit connect. Um, and it'll show up like this after your first connection. Um, you can see kind of what I have here. The join is the username, join is the password. Um, we'll hit connect. To replace since I've already connected with this before. If you made it this far, um, we're kind of in the clear. It's really easy from here. Um, you really just need to click the copy button for this quick installation script and then paste it into the terminal. There's uh, a couple options you'll have to click through this setup. Um, so we'll choose number one for the full installation. And then since I'm using the WaveShare V4, I'll select option four. And then 
you'll get a warning on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 that you don't have the required amount of RAM. Uh, this is just a warning, you can't proceed. Uh, you, it will be a little slower on the Raspberry Pi 2 Zero, but I think that's what most people are going to be running this on, so I hope some optimizations come. Uh, you can go and just click past that warning though. And at this point, it's just going to chug along. It's going to take quite a bit, I'd say at least 5-10 minutes, go ahead and let it run. And then we'll come to a point where you'll um, you'll get the USB network connection info and you'll just acknowledge it with a yes and it'll restart. And after that, we're done. So I'll go ahead and cut the video to the last thing that you're going to see. We'll go ahead and acknowledge that and then I'll show you a little bit of the web UI. Here we are. This is what I was talking about, the network connection info. This is if you're going to be connecting over the USB. Uh, much like the Ponogachi with the RNDIS gadget. You can look up a, a video on how to um, install that driver and then it shows up as a network connection on your computer. You basically set a static IP on that network and then you can communicate with the Ponogachi. Um, so I just hit yes to reboot it. After it reboots, you'll see the screen refresh, and you'll, uh, you'll be done. Here, I'll go ahead and show the web UI, so you can actually hit 48,000 and uh, check out the web UI. I haven't played with it much, but uh, go ahead and explore. This is brand new, so maybe I'll make some videos over this. And then this is the final product. I modified the Pico uh, Raspberry Pi Ponogachi case on Thingiverse and kind of gave it a bajoran spin. If you guys like it, I'll go ahead and put it on Maker World or something. But that's it. Yeah, if you guys like the video, go ahead and give it a like or even subscribe. Thanks for watching.